Good morning, everyone. I'm Al, and this is Harvey. How are you guys? Really hey. happy to be here, and um, glad you all could make it. Here's your clicker, Harvey. Oh, thank you. I'll take I appreciate my that. Pad you want your you. pad? Thanks. This is glad a, I could help. Felix and Oscar here. Um, we're going to be uh, your hosts for the next couple days. And uh, we know there's a lot of very bright people in the room. So we're going to uh, start off and hope that um, you'll walk away feeling like that didn't suck and that uh, there were some very provocative issues that we brought to the fore that made your coming here worthwhile. So with that, um, we thought we'd start off with establishing some context for what's going on, um, which there is a lot of right now. And as we think about the notion of adapting there's a whole lot we could talk about. In fact, when Harvey and I had the first conversation about what we were going to say this morning, there are so many bullets that you know we sort of were discussing. We said we probably have to narrow this to you know five or six things from a media and analytics standpoint and from a creative and content standpoint. So um, we thought it would be best to have Harvey start off and give you a little bit of context on what's going on from a media and analytics space, and then. I'll take a few minutes, and then we'll get into the program. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Alan. So, so I'm going to just talk about some of the trends that drive uh, what we're doing within Group M and, and, and some of the work we're doing with our clients. Um, and hopefully, you'll find some of that to be relevant, useful, and, and hopefully, we'll also have a little time for Q&A toward the back of, of our session. So there we go. So I'm just going to walk up uh, some, some of the trends that we're looking at. And you know, the first one is accountability. Um, I saw a study the ANA had published last uh, summer, and we just actually completed a study that I saw for the first time on Friday. And CMOs continue to be focused on accountability. It's one of the top two or three things on every CMO agenda. Now, the, the, the interesting part is accountability is happening at a time when the measurement of the results is probably more fragmented and difficult than it's ever been before. And so how does a CMO deal with that? And how do we deal with that as, as, as organizations? So when you think about it, um, you've got this, this focus on agile marketing. You've got all of your social media, all, your, all of your uh, search, and all the different channels fragmenting. It's hard to understand what those are contributing toward your business. But that's a, that's a big challenge. At the same time, you've got to make sure that you're delivering sales results. And you know, today, the average CMO has about four years in their chair to prove those results. So, so how do you bring those things together? One of the most common things that we see our clients were asking us, where do your, where do your tactical in-channel analytics sit so that you're optimizing each and every channel and all the different content that you're distributing? And where does your cross-channel analytics sit? And we see more and more clients who are being driven by tactical in-channel analytics and, and pieces of content that may be uh, working, but, but what tends to happen oftentimes is that the messages are getting fragmented and the brands start to fall off the rails. And then you have to go back in the other direction and understand how are your cross-channel analytics working. And so, importantly, structurally, it's important that, you know, as organizations, we bring those things together. The other thing that we're seeing is just the rise of marketing platforms. And the fact is, marketing platforms are democratizing what used to be the exclusive right of, of just large advertisers and large media companies, right? So any one of us can go buy uh, what I'll call cheap media today. There's such an oversupply of media um, that, that you don't have to be a great big advertiser. You don't have to have all the media leverage to get cheap media. So, so where's the scale advantage? The scale advantage has to be on the data assets, right? Understanding the value of every single asset that you have and understanding not just what's the media, but how do you bring those assets together in a way that's driving sales? And how do you bring all the different uh, fragmented channels together in a way that's driving sales? So whether you're integrating attribution modeling, whether you're integrating agent-based modeling, whether you're integrating any of the other capabilities, um, those are essential parts of the stack. And, and, and we need to start to think about our value proposition, not from the standpoint of, of just price, which is easy to, to uh, measure, and not just the you know, cost containment, which is historically where procurement's been driven, but it has to be about understanding value. And, and to a large extent, the internal organizations and, and procurement organizations have to develop those skill sets. Another, another area that we're focused on is retail. If you, if you think about retail, it used to be an area that um, was, was fairly straightforward. 
brick and mortar. It's starting to fragment. And now you're seeing it fragment more and more and more as, as both mobile commerce and e-commerce systems start to mature. Consumers are changing their behaviors. You know, today you can go to Amazon, you can get whatever you want delivered, and you can actually get it delivered on the same day. So consumer behaviors are changing because consumers now are thinking about you know, a different sort of orientation. What do I need now versus what do I need later? So if I've got a splitting headache, I'll run into the Duane Reed and buy whatever I want now. But if it can wait, I may just put it in a shopping basket that will get delivered later. And then what do you want to shop for versus what do you want to just get uh, in the mail or delivered? Because frankly, the dog food looks the same. You know what it looks like. You don't necessarily enjoy that shopping experience. It's big and heavy. On the other hand, if you're buying a sweater, a shirt, something fashionable, um, you know, obviously you want to touch and feel those types of things. You may want to squeeze the uh, fruit before you bring it home. So, so consumer behaviors are changing. And it's important that we understand how are our consumers shopping in every channel and not just the channels, but now the platforms. Because a mobile experience versus a desktop experience versus walking through the store is all a very different experience. And we have to put the data assets in place that allow us to understand those experiences so that we can deliver content that's actually relevant and, and you know, uh, not just for our category, but for the platforms in which consumers are shopping. Another interesting area is what we call the rise of the walled gardens. Um, how many of you were in this business during dot-com 1.0? Okay, a lot. Sometimes uh, I feel like the grandfather when I show up and uh, guys are like, you know, there, there's like one and it's usually the CEO. So, so if you go back to the early days of the internet, right, um, we had to go to media publishers to do targeting. And we paid a fairly big premium uh, for that targeting. And then central ad serving came about and today we have audience-based media so we can actually find audiences who are relevant and valuable no matter where we go. The problem we have now is consumers are accessing the web in many different ways, right? We're, we're using our mobile devices, we're using tablets, we're using connected TVs, and it makes it di more difficult to understand what's happening on the other side of the garden wall. And so without the ability to understand consumer behavior, without the ability to actually direct messages to those consumers based on those behaviors, uh, we're flying blind again. And increasingly, we need to bring together the data assets that allow us to both see beyond those garden walls you know, what's happening uh, within Google, what's happening within Microsoft, what's happening within Amazon, and also to understand how do we access those consumers and those audiences, uh, regardless of where they are uh, behind those garden walls. So we have to create those, those systems both for measurement and access. And that's a huge undertaking, but, but it's an important one because without that, the cost of marketing is going to go up quite a bit. Related to that is just the transition of the cookies. As we said, a lot of the devices that we use to access the web today um, don't require cookies anymore. You know, tablets, mobile, et cetera. There are mobile cookies if you're on Android, but not all the different devices. Again, how do you have cookie-less methods of measuring, and how do you have cookie-less methods of, of targeting consumers? All of the different methods that we apply need to you know, still work with cookies. They're not going away today or tomorrow, despite what, what we may read in the trade press, but they will go away, and they are losing their value over time. And we need to be ready for a cookie-less world, and we need to have the abilities to measure consumers and to interact with consumers and not to be dependent on cookies as the currency that allows for those behaviors to, to occur. Segment of one. Um, this is something that, that is important. You know, I, I was with a client um, probably about uh, two years ago, and I tend to follow most of my clients and, and their trade distributors uh, on, on social media just to see what people are talking about. And I noticed that there was a consumer that couldn't find the product on the shelf. And she reached out to her social community. And within minutes, uh, both a retailer showed up with, with a whole list of coupons for, for that brand plus competitive brands. And, and I also saw some other members of the community chimed in with advice. And within a matter of minutes, I saw a consumer change brands. And this was a loyal consumer. But there, you know, consumers have a different expectation today. It's not just about the brand promise. It's about actually managing all the way through, including CRM. So you know, the fact is, consumers today have a different expectation on, on what a brand has to deliver. It's not just about the fact that you've got a brand, it's on the shelf, but it has to deliver all the way to the end. And they hold the brands accountable. And we need to have the CRM and delivery systems to, to be able to find consumers, measure their response, and deliver to them literally at the one-to-one -one 
message level, but, but at scale with hundreds of millions. And that's affecting the way consumers uh, interact with our brands, and it's, it, it deeply affects the way we have to communicate with consumers. So the days of, of, of you know, mass messages will still be around, but you can't leave it there because of not you're in jeopardy of losing those consumers you've acquired. And it's a lot more expensive to acquire a new consumer than it is to keep your current consumers happy. So, so that's a big area of focus for us and, and, and many of our clients. We have to think differently about video as well. You know, video consumption is going up quite a bit. If you think about video, I saw one study, the average consumption rate's gone up about 25% in the last couple of years. And it's being driven by the fact that as more and more video is consumed over more and more different devices, right? How much do we watch on connected TVs? And by the way, thank you for the Apple TVs. Um, how much do you um, connect through uh, your tablets? How much do you connect through, through um, on-the-go mobile devices, right, through your video? So, so the consumption's going way up, which means that we can start to use video for different purposes. So we all grew up using video for brand storytelling. Today, it can play the role of, of CRM, it can play the role of social CRM, it can play a role in lots of different areas of the marketing. And the way you produce content, and Alan's gonna talk a bit about this, but the way you produce content for this device versus a big screen is obviously very different. And, and, and those specialisms and those capabilities uh, need to be understood. And so a lot of what we focus on also is how do we understand and distribute video for different purposes, including social, CRM, as well as conventional brand storytelling um, and, and other areas of the... And lastly, there's this convergence for the first time through the same pipe of, of research and advertising, right? It's sort of this notion of ask advertising. Um, but for the first time, the channel for asking questions and finding out about behaviors and the channel for delivering messages is actually the same channel. So you can do things that are really simple, like if you're operating in a, you know, say a quick service restaurant, you can ask people where are you having lunch today, and you can deliver a relevant experience uh, today right back to those same people based on the type of experience that they're having and, and where they plan on having lunch. And if they're going to your restaurant, maybe you want to offer them something that will enhance the value there. If they're going to a competitive restaurant, maybe you can uh, you know, reorient re, uh, them toward yours. So, so there are lots of different ways of thinking about it. But the bottom line is uh, this notion of using a single pipe for the purpose of uh, asking questions, understanding behaviors, and distributing messages back that are most relevant to create positive consumer experiences is something that we can do today at scale. And a lot of our time and attention is, is devoted to that. So, um, with that, what we focus on is how do we put those infrastructures together? How do we integrate the delivery and the measurement systems around that? Um, personally, I feel fortunate that I work in a holding company where we have, you know, not only Group M, but we have Cantar, which is a very large research organization. We have uh, KBM Group, which is a direct marketing uh, database company. So increasingly within our own organization, we try to put those assets together in ways that clients can access all these capabilities. And, and I think um, we're seeing a lot of marketers, including some of the people in this room, who are doing similar things internally. Um, the, the fact that your organizations are now operating probably um, with fewer and fewer silos every day and recognizing that data is the one thing that sits across all of your different businesses, um, that, that's an important asset that you have. And I, was, I would ask myself, who is responsible for understanding the overall experience? Um, whether that's starting with consumer, whether that's starting with media, whether that's starting in, in CRM, or whether that's starting in shopper marketing, who's the person who has the best and, and, and full understanding across all the different disciplines? And if those things are fragmented, I'd encourage everyone to go back into your organizations and think about how do we bring those together, whether that's an individual or a group of people working together, because as, as all these trends um, start to come to fruition, and they continue to scale more and more, the ability to bring your data assets together and to conjoin those with other data assets in order to create these capabilities um, is gonna be your, your asset as a marketer. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Alan, um, and hopefully, as I said, uh, we'll have time for some Q&A after. Thanks, Harvey.